Could you describe for us exactly what a pig does? A pig might be something like this. In fact, as far as you're concerned, this might be a, a pig, a personal information gatherer, or to be more precise, a personal data gatherer. But uh, PIG sounds a lot better. Mm. It would record sound, uh, what we're discussing right now. It would record vision. It re would record image. And you might look at this little guy and think that I'm getting it in stereo because of the two eyes there. Mm. Um, okay, that would wander around with a person uh, literally recording everything in both professional life and social life. Um, a huge amount of data, absolutely, but recorded maybe temporarily on some uh, memory that you wear and then maybe downloaded to some bigger memory at home or work. Uh, the problem is accessing that data. You know, I met this guy three years ago. He was fairly tall. He had blue eyes and a, a very multicolored tie. And I think he said something about. Okay, now maybe by using those things I can recall, somehow you can dig out that data and replay it for me on, on a screen. Th there's a huge problem there, and I don't know how we're going to solve it. But that was one of the, I would say, visions that came out that might not be acceptable for social reasons. Because mm -hmm. if you and I at a dinner party, I don't think you'd like me recording everything. Mm. So I, that's the vision. I mean, these are visions being tossed out for you and I and everybody else to evaluate. And they, that one might never come to pass. Mm. Who knows? Yes, I could see that a whole new set of social conventions mm. and mores would, would build up around the fact that almost everything uh, that everybody yes. does and says <clears throat> is right. liable to be video recorded, yes. basically. Yes. yes. This is a problem. I think when people interact with these new technologies uh, over a network in playing games, you know, I'd be playing some game with a guy in Los Angeles, protocols will develop, and we don't know much about them at the moment, but I think in this particular case, you know, people might draw the line and say, if you're wearing one of these and have it switched on, I'm going to be very circumspect mm. about what I say. Mm. That could be difficult. It occurs to me as we speak, are we in danger of becoming very insular? If we're going to meet across transparent walls right. and, and so forth, are we ever going to travel in the future? Yes, yes. The, uh, the visionaries I talked to said we're still going to be traveling because there's that person-to-person, -person, the value in that person-to-person -person interaction that's very difficult to define, but we're going to want to keep it. So none of them envisaged uh, us all just sitting in our little tally cottages or whatever uh, looking at the outside world only on a screen. Mm. No, we're still going to be travelling because it's fun as well. Right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bright looking technological future oh, from yeah. your standpoint. Yeah. Oh, it's very bright. Yes. And you're yes. obviously looking and forward, enjoyable. forward to it. It's Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, I, must I say want to try and influence it as well. I'm sure you will be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will be. I must say I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> Professor Spence, I've been sitting here fascinated. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very us. much. Indeed. Thank you.